available messages on screen for the audio that will never make it becomes available. This station will now be Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast, the only place for prepping survival and entertainment. We're your hosts, Cameron and Kobe, and we are ready to bring survival goodness direct to your dirty ear holes. Mm Mm-hmm. This is the absolute only place to get entertained. Yeah, it's, you're not going to get it anywhere else, guys. Cameron, what's up, buddy? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, buddy, old pal. <laughs> I know you hate it when I do that, and I don't know why. <laughs> so I do it anyways. Yeah. Um, uh, What's going on this fine day today? This is a podcast day. It's yeah. Typical mm. random information that helps no one on earth. <laughs> Is that how you feel about this? Is um, that- sometimes. Okay. This one probably will help. You think? I think recreate I society. think this one is less valuable than most of the <laughs> ones we do. It is. It is. <laughs> kind of funny though. It is. Because if you ever sat down and thought, what if I could recreate mm-hmm. society? Well, recreate, remake, remake. You just couldn't do it yeah. from scratch. Yeah. That's how what we're talking it? about? Yeah. We're gonna like how to, like society fails post yeah. SHTF. We talked about all the good important stuff, mm-hmm. but then it's like. Well, these the things aren't turning around, so <laughs> yeah. we got to build our own society, people. Yeah, so how are you going to do it, and what are some of the important aspects of, of that process? Yeah. That's what we're going to talk about today. Coming but, from the smartest people on yeah, Earth. Yeah, I mean, where else? who else could give you this information, <laughs> really, when it comes down to I've it? I've studied population. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but guys, today's podcast is brought to you by Tac Pack, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside. Get 10% off your first Tac Pack with our code CAT. Casual Preppers at TacPack.com and join the thousands of satisfied subscribers today. That is 10% off with our code Casual Preppers at TacPack.com. Today we have one to show you and we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, we? when you see this one, you're gonna be like, what have I been doing this yeah. whole time? Why have I not prescribed? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you're gonna say. Uh, Listener, reviews starts now. We are literally prescribing it to you. We are, yeah. You need to <laughs> you need go to pre- and subscribe. You need to get it. Um, listener reviews. This one came on Facebook from Mark C. Messina. One minute ago. Yeah, it wasn't really one minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you guys are going to get me fired. Well, I apologize for that, buddy. We have that problem all the time, We're too. We're going to get fired. <laughs> yeah. I walk around work laughing out loud to myself all day long. People are starting to question my sanity. <laughs> when you guys went into how China is watching you on your cheap security cameras, <laughs> you had me in tears. I don't remember that, but I'm sure it was funny. My Yi cameras are from China. Oh, so. is that what it is? Well, they're still watching me. He says, sometimes I zone out and forget there are not five people on this podcast. <laughs> you never know a special guest may be on the episode, whether it's a redneck, a Chinaman, a crazy Russian, or a combination of all three. You guys are awesome to listen to, and you make my work days go by much, go by fast. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys want to Surprise, wanna be- surprise, there are five people here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so- <laughs> yeah. You just can't see them. If you guys want to be a part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes, go to Facebook, go to the Kindle book on Amazon. Leave us a five-star review and, and make it awesome. Up. It's a mad, mad show world. Up right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to just talk over all of those. Okay, today. go ahead. That's fine. Okay. Um, What do you got, Cameron? Well, I had one, you mm-hmm. know, but I think everybody's- kind of watched and looked into the uh, seizure of the uh, mm-hmm. British oil yeah. vessel. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk about it. Oh, fine. I'm going to talk about something way better. Okay. Did you know that we were like this close, which I'm point. <laughs> um, imagine a little pee between your fingers. That's Oh, That's pee. how close. Okay. <laughs> a little pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> um, to dying. Did you know that? We? Like you and I? This week. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. There was a bunch of asteroids oh, gosh. that crossed by real close to Earth. For real? As a matter of fact, one of them was so freaking close yeah. that people, like, last second thought they were going to die. <laughs> really? So, um, yeah, there was a 100 meter in diameter. I have no idea how big that is. It's like 90 yards or yeah. something? I don't Mitris. know. And it, racing at 24 kilometers a second, just missed Earth. This wow. rock called Asteroid 2019, okay? That's what it was called? <laughs> the year? Our year? Wow. 
I want to name that one 2019. I'm going to call that one 2019. July 24th. That one we saw two years ago, we called it 2017. <laughs> it's not the same one. Not the same one. Um, sped by our planet at 11.22 a.m. on Thursday. Oh, I thought I felt something. I know. Like right around My lunchtime. My hair like, blew up a little bit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's what it was, yeah. Just kind of like, <clears throat> yeah. like a fart in the wind. <laughs> That's what exactly what I was thinking too. <laughs> Passed by within seventy thousand kilometers, which wow, that is pretty freaking close. Yeah. Um, it's still a long ways, but it's within the or, it's less than the orbit of the moon, so that's mm-hmm. freaky. Oh, it's like in between us and the moon. Yeah, but closer to us than the moon's orbit. Wow, freaky. Yeah. Um, so they said it's impressively close. Impressive. I don't think it's quite sunk in yet. Yet it's a pretty big deal, says Associate <laughs> Professor Michael Brown from Monash. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Mm. University School of Physics and Astronomy. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. It's impressively close. <laughs> what if it, was that? If it hit Earth, a nerd, but it was like a... <laughs> <didn't>, <laughs> We've been doing that voice too much that it like just came out. We almost got hit by an asteroid, see? I like this from the mm. this is from a, a university school of physics and astronomy. If it hit Earth, it makes a bang, a very large nu- like a very large nuclear weapon, a very large one. <laughs> it's like all right, that very school's large. got some smart people. Yeah. It would have hit with over thirty times the energy of an atomic blast at Hiroshima. Wow. That's Says, nutty. Swinburne University astronomer associate professor Alan Duffy. It's a city killer asteroid, but wow. because it's so small, it's incredibly hard to see until right at the last minute. It's 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 threading tightly between the lunar orbit. Wow. Definitely too close for comfort. So anyway, did you guys know that happened? But you didn't. But guess what? We're still alive. You think they would have at least tried to test one of those ways to get rid of it? Know. You know, <clears throat> like we talked about the other day. Like, at least try it. I know. That's See if it's going to work. Put some sails on that mother. It's, a, it's gone. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Wait, what? There was an asteroid? I'm just yeah. like, they track all these, and, you know, this one, mm-hmm. last minute, they're like, what is that? What is that? What is that? No, <laughs> <laughs> Wait. We're going to die. Where's it hitting? Where? Oh, it's passed. Oh, yeah, thank goodness. But we're anyway. just going to tell everybody we knew this was coming, and it was okay. We don't want <laughs> yeah. to scare anybody. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we knew that one. <laughs> yeah. You guys just haven't been listening to us. Mm. But, yeah, I, apparently there's Crazy. like four or five big ones that pass yeah. through, which I think happens a lot. Yeah. I think I'm just getting a lot of stuff because I've been searching on Google. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just getting all these inf- yeah. all this information about asteroids. So, um, Wednesday, Cameron, the WHO, the World Health Organization. De- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who? Um, declared <laughs> the ongoing and now year-old Ebola outbreak a global health emergency. <laughs> <laughs> who? I'm going to tell patients that. According to <laughs> who? Um, the emergency declaration comes after a man became sick and brought the virus to the Congolese city of Goma. What are you laughing at? I just at? got my head to doing that. <laughs> so, who? Um, yeah. That's great. I know. A highly populated transit hub with an international airport and next door to Rwanda. Rwanda. Hotel Rwanda? Yeah. As it stands today, the current Ebola outbreak has surpassed 2,500 cases and 1,500 deaths. That's a ton. Concentrated largely in two provinces in eastern Congo. Wow. Time to shut down Africa. Yeah, we just need to shut the borders. Uh, The response effort has been um, hampered by a deadly mix of armed conflict. Conflict. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> with no T. <laughs> Distrust. It's different. A little different. <laughs> yeah. This is what... Not the, as serious. what they call no it tea. on that continent. Um, <laughs> distrust and a lack of medical resources. Less than half of the affected population trusts the government. And Ebola responders, armed groups, have even killed responders. Public health experts expect the killed outbreak... Killed responders? Yeah. Really? To continue into the foreseeable future. Wow. Until it comes to our borders, nobody's going to give I'm the first killed crap. responder. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Until it gets like an American, ain't nobody going to care. Well, what, if they're I killing mean, responders, then uh, yeah. maybe... I don't know, man. I, I, I don't feel too bad for you. It's yeah. Like you gotta well, stop doing in. that. They're trying to help. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> they got missing, all right? Uh, it's like uh, shooting your you know, pharmacist when you're trying to get some <laughs> Oxycontin. He's trying to give it to you. Can I give you information about this medicine? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Sick of these people so trying to give me information and help. Um, so, yeah, that's crazy, and let's hope it doesn't uh, spread any further because that disease scares cases. the balls off of me. 
It really does. <laughs> that is <laughs> that's scary, man. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> that puts it in all new perspective. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> okay, that's Ebola. <laughs> Anyways, let's be careful, all right? Yeah. So, all right, well, let's go into this. So today we're talking about rebuilding civilization um, and how would you go about doing that and what are the major points that you got to think about. Yeah. So so we've always talked about like coming into, you know, you got your preps, your mm-hmm. bug out location, you're, you're listening on your communication yep. device, mm-hmm. you know, following all that's going on. But, yeah. Hey, it's six months now. Now it's a year. Now it's yeah. years. Like, well. What, what are we going to do? Do we, do we we get something going here, people? <laughs> well, should we, you know, keep living? We've all been sitting around the radio for six months. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no songs coming on. <laughs> um, yeah, so like... Rick Dees isn't coming on, people. <laughs> what you say, Rick Dees? Yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously this is after, you know, a large-scale SHTF situation where there's basically no government. There's nothing left. There's maybe small bands of survivors here and there type of thing. And then you have to say, well, we got to pick up the pieces and, and move this thing along. Or civilization yeah. is just gonna, you know, keep going back. Time to procreate, everybody. Yeah, let's get it. On. <laughs> um, so this is kind of like this things you'll have to think about. Uh, yeah. When that process starts, like, yeah, you got to figure like, you know, you want to have at least an idea if you get into that situation. Yeah. What you might want to think about. This is this is kind of more of a long term plan. It is. Yeah. It's but, a little crazy, but here we are. Yeah. Yeah. We're so, here anyways. You're here. We're here. Let's. You talk may about not it. find it important, but we did. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah. So to to like really understand some of the more like uh intense details of like mm. you know defense stuff we'll go into you got to consider your group size yeah um there, there's pros and cons to both a small group um is is what a lot of us probably right now have kind of formed yeah. you know you got a few people that you know you include into it um and there, there's some pros to that more stealthy, mm-hmm. easier to pick up and move wherever, you know, yeah. easier to watch uh, who's part of your group and to look over them and, and keep everybody safe and less chance of, you know, bickering, yeah. and getting into power struggles and yeah. who knows what. And so there are those pros to the small group. Some negatives to that that would be advantages to the bigger group is, you know, it's been proven over and over that there's strength in numbers. Yeah. And civilizations and groups do not progress very well with that small group. Mm-hmm. You may be more isolated and maybe live forever in those little groups, but you don't really, you can't advance. You yeah. can't do a lot of the things that a bigger group can do, which some of those things in the bigger group, it's weird I didn't keep my notes in here because I had the pros and cons for the large, but I can remember them. Don't worry. It's right there. It's not showing on mine. Super weird. Just the small. Huh. I don't know. No, see, under the large, there's no, there's no notes. Oh, um, no. so with the large group, it's right there. Oh, it's because I added in that. Anyway, jeez. Let me read you this. Okay. So Terry Hunt, I don't know if you guys know who Terry Hunt is. He's yeah. a leading expert on human history of Easter Island. Oh, that yeah. would be a sweet study. I majored life. in early human history of yeah. Easter Island. There's nothing here. Let me study it. Yeah. Um, he states that the demography. Demography. Demography? Demography. Yeah. Um, I said it right the first time. <laughs> you did. Well done. Simulations suggest that groups of 20 or more have a better chance of long-term survival. That's because having more people minimizes the chance of a skewed sex ratio. I and feel like I got a skewed sex ratio going on right <laughs> I now. I do, too. <laughs> and prevents the first generation from being too closely related to one another. That makes sense. Basically, you're not going to in, be inbred, and there's yeah. a lot of complications that come that's from that. That's bad. We've learned this. You ever lived in a redneck town? Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> exactly. The, you need a bigger sex ratio. <laughs> yeah. Or better. Well, I can tell your problem right now. <laughs> your sex ratio is off. Your sex ratio is off. Those two are cousins. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Cousin to get together. Is that your sister? <laughs> well, well, easy enough. Easy to figure out. Um, so the pro of the large groups, mm. they allow for more skill variety. Yeah. You know, you're going to collect more people that know a variety of different things. Mm-hmm. Unless you're all um, farmers and <laughs> you yes. don't want anybody to come in and be part of that. So you do want to try and get, you know, and we've talked about that group thing a little bit. Yeah. Um, people want more details on there, but I ain't giving it to you right now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, you want like, you know, the policeman, the fireman, the, uh, physician, pharmacist, Native American, <laughs> yeah, construction worker. <laughs> and then you ba- can stay at the YMCA. From Boston. <laughs> Cause all, we all know the bank from Boston is going to get you the furthest. In exactly. Any. Oregon trail uh, got yep. me to the end. Like 
multiple times. It, exactly. We floated the river with no problems. I always caulk my wagon and float across. That's what I did. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> caulk. <laughs> There's a nail in there. Um, yeah. And I always hired an Indian because they know how to they do. cross the river. They understand it. But anyway... Um, so there's you get that variety of skill that's going to mm-hmm. help you a ton in a lot of different aspects. Um, scavenging and hunting, you know, more people can go out, watch each other's backs, <clears throat> use their expertise, but at the same time, you have more people to defend yeah. and watch over the group. Yeah. Um, but the, the negatives to this is that more people you get together, the more chance people just start fist fighting. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they just hate each other. Yeah, people um, are the worst. They get annoyed with each other. They mm-hmm. have different ideas. Um, so there's always that that you're going to have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Bigger groups probably going to survive a lot better, but you're going to have power struggles. You're going to have um, the need for more resources to keep everybody yeah. happy. And uh, the, there's just a lot more things that yeah. need to take place and be organized Eventually, in a large group. Eventually, if you're going to progress and you're going to actually bring civilization back, you're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's just something that, that's inevitable. It just has to. Yeah. yeah. It's just how it works. Mm-hmm. So... Um, but the uh, collaboration is is a big part of your group. You've mm-hmm. got to all have that same goal. Yeah, you know, it's like you don't want to pull somebody into your group that you just have no idea about, or you hate working with. Oh yeah, you know, I want to save you. Why don't you come? No, you're not going to get those involved. Mm-hmm. You already know those people. <laughs> yeah. that you're just going to want to exclude. Yeah, because- make a list now, so that way when it comes <laughs> down to it, anti prepper list. <laughs> yeah, they will not be in my yeah. civilization. So. um but that that collaboration applies to all the aspects of survival. You know, mm-hmm. everybody's got to understand, you know, that whatever they do is going to affect the group. Mm-hmm. So they've got to understand, if I'm helping here and doing this and let me take some of the the night shifts and let me mm-hmm. help with growing your garden. <laughs> let, yeah. me, let me water the plants today. Yeah, and let me help with this sex ratio yeah. thing. <laughs> Get it figured out. What kind of stuff do we need here, huh? <laughs> Let's work on it. I don't know about the sex ratio problem, but I can help. I I've can got tell. some notes in my backpack. Got We're going to figure it out. Some notes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the collaboration of going out and getting more supplies, you know, that, yeah. that lazy person that's just going to hang out and eat all of your supplies, mm. you want to boot them out. So, like, you want to kick them to the curb. Don't bring my kids. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Because yeah. that's all they do is eat. They don't yeah. do nothing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the more, yeah, and then you want that family with nine kids. You're yeah. like, tell me about your kids. So you're Mormon? Are Is that they? right? <laughs> Got like nine kids. <laughs> well, I don't think you're going to fit in this group. Yeah, I'm just looking out for your own well-being here. I'm not guaranteeing think. we're having church on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah, I won't, yeah, I'm probably already in trouble with my wife on that one. <laughs> um. So leadership. So this is a thing that, that comes down to like figuring out in the beginning of. Yeah. That's why it's good to communicate before. You know, yeah. the the scenario of like, there doesn't always have to be, you know, who made you? What's that line in Tremors? <laughs> I don't know. Who remember. died and made you leader yeah, or whatever? I don't remember. Um, and th- th- there's a perfect example. <laughs> tremors. Watch Tremors. You'll figure it out. There's a power struggle there. Yeah. Who makes you in charge? Um, there doesn't always have to be that person in charge, but everybody, you know, if they collaborate and work together Mm -hmm. and just kind of assume, you know, Oh, you're better organized with this. I want you to take care of that. And, and hopefully you figure that out with uh, interacting with your group, wherever it be on Facebook or, you know, stuff like that. So just, just ahead of time, you know, plan for that. Uh, how are you going to work out in a group and, and um, how are you going to work out that sex ratio problem? Well, the problem is sometimes you can't work that out because you don't know who's going to be there with you rebuilding society. Exactly. Like, you just don't and know. And you're going to, you know, if you're comp- like that scenario where you're just like, um, I don't want to let this person into my group, but mm-hmm. you're, you're a nice person. You yeah. let them in and you never know what you're going to get there. Exactly. Yeah. So I um, say handcuff them for six months. <laughs> yeah. Decide what their personality yes. is. Yes. And then let them go. Yep. I, I agree. So one of the first things you need to do when you're when you're starting this new society, when you're starting to rebuild it, is you have to figure out protection and security. Because like really before you can do anything, that has to be solved. Like cuz you can't do anything if if you're not safe and and you're not secure, you basically can't do anything. No. Like because you're all, it's all you're going to worry about. Yeah. And so Well, you're not going to expand your group. Nobody's no. going to want to be part of a you know, no, if they're not safe. There's no fence here. <laughs> what? We yeah. don't even have shelter. Yeah, so that's Join just us. that's not going to work. So um, you have to you have to figure this out first. So um, 
everything that you're trying to do, you basically have to have shelter. So that's one of the first things. Get shelter for for all of the different. Everybody has to have it like a house to live in of some sort, you know. And so this v- varies wildly depending on what your SHTF yeah. situation is. Is there still buildings around that you can use? Do you have to build new buildings? What is it, you know? But that's one of the first things you have to worry about is structures and shelters. Um, are you going to repurpose stuff that's there? Are you just going to build some new stuff, you know? Um, so like before you can start government or schooling or anything, you have to have shelter and protection and security. So sure. houses, fences, walls, uh, watchtowers or security posts, whatever that might be, uh, security measures, security details, security groups, all those types of things need to be one of the first things on your list. Um, <clears throat> uh, basically, in this situation, you're going to have a lot of other groups probably trying to get what you have, yeah. right? I mean, it's going to be a desperate situation. This isn't yeah. going to be I easy. I guarantee you mm-hmm. there's going to be that group that's just like all out firearms, military. Yeah. We're going to just kill everybody. Exactly. And take what we want. And so if they if they, if they show up and they see that you don't have any sort of security measures, you don't have a fence, you don't have a wall, you don't have anything, then you're basically sitting ducks and whatever you do is just going to get yeah. taken, stolen, or destroyed, right? Yeah. Um, you also need to have basic protection from weather. Um, and those types of things you have to, yeah. you know, it's, I think I'm, you know, like I said, I think I'm a cynic, but <clears throat> I don't really feel like, like, uh, the walking dead. It's like every group they encountered was like mm-hmm. going to kill them or yes. put their throats or, yeah. I just, I don't think it's going to be that extreme. <clears throat> no, I don't think so either. But, but it is good to see, like, I think a lot of that, like, yeah. when you get into this community it bigger, there's always a weird crap that's going on, you exactly. know, it's like, you're in charge and you're taking advantage Mm-hmm. It's just it happens. Yep. So, so um, it's just something you have so to think about. If anybody's called the governor, don't. Don't do it. It's don't not a good it. idea. Um, so collaboration, like Cam said, you guys have to have the same goal to work towards, right? And this is part of that. Um, working together on a common goal, um, especially at the beginning where it's security or things like that or protection, it's great for morale and it keeps people sane. It keeps them from going crazy, especially in that situation where there's not a lot else to do. Like, what else do you do if there's no power? You know, you're not going to concerts. You're not playing video games. You're not. Uh, what? Yeah. You have to have something to work on, and this gives people that so they don't go crazy, right? Yeah. It helps keep them calm. It keeps them busy. And when people are busy, what's the, what's the thing? Idle hands make. What yeah, is, yeah. What is the, the, yeah, like you well, have it's to, like in prisons. It's like where they have them working because they're easier to watch. They're easier you know? to watch. They're people, easier to take care of. Yeah. There's less fights. There's all these different things. So you got to keep people busy. Um, <clears throat> and when you have really good security, uh, it helps promote trade and interaction with other types of groups and communities. Um, when it's secure, when it's safe, um, it's just going to be much easier to do those types of things. Yeah. So that's what makes me the most nervous about like big cities. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I think, you know, you've got your big cities and your workers, and then the outskirts, yeah. you get the people that are relying on the government already. Yes. And then, like, in any scenario, you got all these people just that are just castaways that, uh-huh. you know, nobody wants them. Yeah. And you don't want them because they're not going to help you in any way. <laughs> yeah. Because they're, they're, they've been living their whole life just relying on everybody else's work. Yep, 100% true. So That's scary. Um, it, it, that just think about that as being probably your primary objective once you start this process is getting, getting that secure security done. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, and this, like planning and recording, uh, the history of like what your group's gone through, what your group's learned, yeah. where your group's been, and inventorying, like that's a huge part of success as a group. Um, and I, I don't know if you want to designate a group historian. Why not? Or I think it's good for you personally too to kind of to to keep a journal of like the things that are that are happening within the group. Yep. It's just good to see for progress. Like there's no way how are you not going to repeat some same mistakes? And who knows how long this is going to go on. You're going to be yeah. raising people and you know adolescents and and kids up in this group. <laughs> they need to be able to see like the mistakes that you've made um you know don't try and grow a farm over here because we got a bunch of dead bodies. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. Uh, we've been <clears throat> pooping in this corner. Don't put up a house for someone's <laughs> home over here. We've been um, pooping in this corner. So just keeping a, an organized plan, and in, the biggest part is like the inventory of, you know, what's your supplies now and, and has your mm-hmm. group expanded? And, you know, what are your expectations over the next few months? It just helps you 
to when you're out scavenging and doing things like that to to kin- continue to build and not make the same you know mistakes and it's just the only way that your group is going to progress you know the organized effort of when you're out you need to collect the ammo too and you need to be collecting this and that because mm-hmm. we've taken in a group of five more people and things like that um so documenting keeping a record of what's going on Mm -hmm. and also um you know just books in general having ways to to progress the knowledge of the group you know yeah oh yeah it's like you've got the person that has all the skill in one area but you know their kids and everything if you don't have the supplies to continue to grow and and learn and and learn new uh skills then yeah you're kind of just stuck or holding on to those old skills too too. that's one of the biggest things too so like I said, depending on what your SHTF situation, your post-apocalyptic situation looks like, if there are books around still, then obviously gather as much of that yeah. stuff up as you can and keep it safe. Yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, that's going to be the it's knowledge. Like the library, yeah, of the prophets and yeah, the wisdom. Because you're basically of the like group. starting over technologically, which is yeah. crazy. In, unless you have certain things, you in, don't have people your, anymore. Yeah, it's There's gone. No YouTube. Yeah, so I don't think so. There's no Wikipedia. Yeah. And so you're just kind of starting over, and yeah. it just kind of depends on who's in who you still have available that has that knowledge, or what books you can find right. that has that knowledge. That's what it comes down to, right? And, and it's so, good to like, depending on the scenario, like say it is a viral outbreak, mm-hmm. you've got a you've got a document just like in a medical, yeah, you know of you know when they came in and the, and the time frame, so you can figure out how to isolate, protect your group, mm-hmm. and then maybe see. You, I mean, it could be to a point to where you're working on some way to, you know, treat it. Or, or it's like, uh, what's the Will Smith, uh, yeah, movie, yeah. The uh, what's it called? I can't think no, of it. I can't think right now. Yeah, with, with his dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't think of what it's called. I, I, Why can't I think of it? <laughs> slipped my mind too. That's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. Isn't thing. an Omega Man remake? I don't. It's know. the it, Omega yeah. Man was the original. Yeah, I can't. think And they kind of tweaked though. it. Uh, Freak! I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so. Keeping a record of like your group's progress and the things you've learned, plus uh, obtaining that old historical information from books to keep learning, is really important in uh, su- the success of your survival group. So yeah, I completely agree. Um, so then, when we move past that, um, manufacturing kind of becomes. I am legend. Good gracious! Oh, I can't yeah, what I that was. That was driving me nuts. <laughs> um, manufacturing and trades in they're very important when rebuilding a society. Right. Yeah. And so we just thought we'd go through a couple of these to be thinking about as that's happening. Um, energy. That is very, very important. Yeah. Um, at all times in any society. Right. Um, the comforts that come from energy. Yeah. You know, lighting. Uh huh. Um, entertainment. It's all huge. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so with energy, there's going to be several things. You're going to need skilled people, engineers, to to execute those things, right? Yeah. To make it happen. Yeah. Well, you, the, to de- develop ways to collect energy, uh-huh. store energy, like and it's complicated. It. It's like, super complicated. All the stuff that I have for backup is like <clears throat> enough for a few people. Exactly. A couple yeah. hours a day. And that's and that's just a very very small portion of yeah. what you would probably so it's like really sustainable want. Sustainable energy and mm-hmm. developing like this huge way of powering a whole you know communities. Yeah, lighting and everything. That's going to take a lot of skill. It's going to take a lot of, of people. And then uh, also the collection of like the, like, what are you going out to look for? I don't even, mm-hmm. you know, those fan blades look good. Yeah. Probably make something out of that. Exactly. Yeah. So um, energy is going to be one of the big things you have to think about. For sure. Uh, the next one is farming, obviously, in, you know, uh, farming and ranching and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you got to have people that understand how to grow. Yeah. Or you have to learn how to grow. Or you have to have books that tell you how to grow, right? Um, cattlemen, ranchers, all those types of things. Because- they always talk a lot about, there's like that grace period <clears throat> yeah. after an apocalypse where, uh-huh. one, you still have your supermarkets yeah. that can can sustain a lot of people if that's your own and protected. Yep, exactly. But if you, for you a know, while. But you could, you're could you only going to be able to use that for a certain amount of time. And mm-hmm. then goes to the supplies that you've stocked up on, and eventually it all runs out. And yeah. so you've got to have somebody who knows how to reproduce and, mm-hmm. well, not uh, themselves. Well, I figured that out. I'll <laughs> tell you what. Ah, uh, cheap. <laughs> Leveled up on that. I got a couple books. We're good. I'm not going to lose that knowledge. <laughs> got a couple of pictures and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, you, and you have to realize when you need to start doing that stuff, you know, in advance so that you're not like, 
well, oh, crap, there's no more food at the supermarket yeah. for these three or 400 people that are living here. What do we do? You, yeah. know, you have to be thinking about that. And what, what's that thing that I always find pretty interesting? It's like maybe you can in that area grow a certain thing really well. It's like what starvation? It was like if you had one. Oh, like the rabbit starvation rabbit thing? Rabbit starvation. Yeah, yeah, so if you're just eating rabbits out in the wild, they have no fat. On. Yeah. So if you're only eating that, you will basically starve yeah. because you won't get any fat at all. If you're, if you've got to have for, this, like, yeah, you have to have a diverse, of diverse food and, and crops and things like yeah. that to, especially for a large group of people. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like potatoes by themselves, you know, yeah. you yeah. got to have a little more mm-hmm. potatoes and maybe Butter. some um, fried pieces of human skin. Exactly. Mm, it's so good. <laughs> but they actually do say that if you have potatoes and butter, you can live off of that. Oh, really? That's like that all makes you sense. need. Like you could you get your do fats it. And mm-hmm. you get your yep. Sugars. Yep, exactly. So, anyways, yeah, so farming, that's going to be a big, big one. Yeah, huge. Um, weapons, this comes down to several things. Obviously, security, and it comes down to hunting and, and food yeah. procurement, right? So, you either have to, you know, figure out how to make weapons, reproduce them, or scavenge them for yeah. a certain amount of time. And then the maintenance of them. Yeah. Like, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. So you you have to have somebody that understands those, or you've got to go out and figure it out. Yeah. And so it's something to think about, right? Yeah. Those are all limited. Yeah. Um, limited tools, time. Tools are, are a big one, too, um, <clears throat> because as you're building anything, basically, you're going to have to have tools. Yeah. And so... Again, it comes back to what does your situation look like? Is there tools available? Is Lowell still around? You can just go grab some stuff. Right. But, you know, you, you might not have power. If you don't have power yet, then you got to have all hand tools, and you got to learn how to use all those hand tools because yeah. a lot of people just don't know. No. You know? And it's crazy, too. Like, And I'm sure your dad's the same way. Like, mm-hmm. There's sometimes you're just like, how did you figure that out? You know? I know. Yeah, can't, like, how'd just, you do like, it? My dad bought this, like, it's an agitator from a milk tank, uh-huh. and he wanted to do a zip line at his cabin. Yeah. And he's like, I wanted something that would pull him back up. Yeah. But it was, like, kind of slow. And then he's like, when I get up there, how do you, you know, do you have to undo the cord from the person? And it's just kind of a pain. Yeah. Anyways, the next, time, it back the next time I see him, he's got the, he's like, I sped it up with this. And then I drilled a hole through here. You pull the pin, and the cord just falls when they go down. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you got to have those people that are in You got to have those people that, um that are have like engineering minds yeah. that just think yep. that way. And it's like my dad's a farmer mm-hmm. and yeah. he he did welding in college and and he never finished and the, I swear he can make anything. Yeah, like, that's that's exactly how my dad is too. He's like you need to build this and I'm like I have no idea how to build this. He's like in 5 seconds he's like okay, we'll just do it this way and I was like how would you even know? Like <laughs> yeah. what why does your brain tell you to do that? Cuz <laughs> mine know. says I don't know what the f to do. <laughs> and so it's, it's I think that's the hard thing about the skills, you know, yeah. it's just like you can't Sometimes you can't know yeah. it. You can't. Don't you judge can't a book it. by its cover. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, so tools are going to be a big thing. Um, you need to know the person. That's what I'm saying. That's that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. Um, clothing. Eventually, clothing is going to be something you'll have to think about in your long term uh, plan. So, can you scavenge stuff, yeah. or are you going to have to? Uh, um, make it. My or, wife looks at clothing every day. I know. So she's got to And I it have out. to review yeah. all of the stuff that she's narrowed it down mm-hmm. to. So, so you kind of have the skill, I think. <laughs> unless. I've got a good eye. For, unless you're, uh, it's going to be like a nudist utopia type thing. Oh, okay. It's like you're not even going to worry about clothes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So if you got your sex ratio balance. Yeah, exactly. Why work? <laughs> really, that's number one. Sex ratio balance. That's not going to cause problems. Yeah, you're going to be fine. <laughs> Um, carpentry, we talked about that already, you know, building, um, and having those people to understand that. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be I don't think I can do that. Humongous. It's yeah. going to be huge. Like I can help somebody. I can swing a hammer. Yeah. I can cut a board. I can drill some holes but, and put some yeah, wood screws you in. You can drill and you can screw like nobody else, but, um, <laughs> you got to learn, you got to know how to, how to actually. That's exactly right. <laughs> do it with your mind. That's, that's, I put that <laughs> in all of my resume. I do too. Special skills, <laughs> drilling and screwing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, like a tier two? Yeah, at least a tier two. Maybe three, three and a half. No, I, I have not mastered either, but I'm yeah. very good at it. So what about food, Cameron? I mean, what do you think there? I think um, some people are just naturally skilled at making anything taste good. So you do want to designate somebody that knows what they're doing. Uh-huh. You know, because um, there's people that they can't just wing it. You mm-hmm. know, they have to like... You see him like blowing the flour off the top of the measuring cup. Like, it's yeah. got to get it just right. Uh-huh. And yeah. then my mom's like, 
and it tastes, it tastes amazing every time. Glorious. Huh? It might be the two to four sticks of butter yeah. that has put into everything. <laughs> yeah. That could be it, I'm pretty sure. Uh-huh. But no, like she just is is extremely good at cooking. Mm-hmm. And there are those people that you're gonna want to kind of like, you know, can you give me an inventory of the things you need mm-hmm. yeah. and cook it and feed us all. Yeah. Now do it. Mm-hmm. But um but yeah, you've got the specialists too that are like good bakers. Mm-hmm. Um, bread has its own world of yeah, like yeah. knowledge that I don't have. No, no. I go buy it. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then you've too. got um, your sweet stuff to like you know boost morale and 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 you can make healthy things that are actually good tasting. Yeah, you want something for the little kids. You do. You have to have something for the little kids and the little obese people. Yeah. <laughs> They're the little be, obese people. They're going to be in your group, and you, you got to make them. <laughs> you don't want the fat people grumpy. That's what he's trying to say. You don't say. want them to turn and turn into the. You it's don't. always on the games, the exploder. They're like the <laughs> yeah. ones that come up behind you. Just, ah! They waddle towards you and just blow up. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, but I, yeah, uh, food's huge. Cooking and preparing that food is just mm-hmm. as important of having it. You know. So. I agree. I agree. Um, Tech and science. Yeah. So that one's tough. Yeah, because. Like the reason I put it on there is because I was trying to fill some time, <laughs> I was trying to build some. Is that what you were doing? No, but um, the conveniences and the comfort in life mm-hmm. we have because of technology. Yeah, you know, we talked about the energy, the lighting, and all that. But like portable lighting and flashlights mm-hmm. and um, contraptions and things like that that are going to help. Yeah, the hunting and the you know collection of food, the processing of food. Yeah. So you do want to have somebody that's you know, skilled in science. Mm-hmm. Chemistry, for one, is huge. Oh, gosh, yeah. You know, you got to have somebody that's going to be able to make Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oxycodone. Mm-hmm. That's the only two meds you need. Uh, you got that. You'd live forever. One will help your pain, freeze your butthole up. Yeah. And you got to use Pepto-Bismol and exactly. laxatives. But it's no, so, you want somebody that's yeah. skilled to be able to make these different things, mm-hmm. you know. It's so crazy to think of all the aspects and all the areas you got to get covered if you want to yeah. keep progressing. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's why just, I love the the lone wolf person. Yeah, that I'm just like yeah. lone wolf and sounds so cool. It does. Yeah, but, but you'll never. Pro- it'll. Just you're not be gonna you. go anywhere. You gotta. Yeah. You gotta be included, or you mm-hmm. gotta have like that safe hub to come back to. Mm-hmm. That I agree. That group. Um, Anyway, real quick, Cam. Um, did you know that most subscription boxes are full of samples and junk you'll never use? Mm-hmm. No, but not Battle Box. It's the monthly subscription box for men full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, BattleBox sends you the coolest selection of hand-picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear, all valued at far more than what you normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here's a sampling of what users received this month. A freaking sweet Gerber multi-tool. It was awesome. And the Mantis EDC knife. If you haven't seen it, it looks like the coolest. Cool Mantis. Yeah, it's, it's got like gears and cool crap all over your girlfriend's gonna love it all of this badassness starts <laughs> at about <laughs> and your boyfriend uh, just 30 bucks a month they've shipped almost a million boxes and they won best men's subscription box of 2017 our listeners get a free tactical knife when you sign up at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. That's trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. You'll get your first battle box plus a free tactical knife at trybattlebox.com slash casual preppers. Use our code casual preppers, and you dudes are going to be freaking ready to rebuild any society after any SHTF event. Seriously. I would have to say, when I go out somewhere or I'm you know, taking pictures of gear or using mm-hmm. gear. Yeah. At least sixty percent of what I have has come. Yeah, like almost all. I swear. It's crazy, isn't it? I always have something on me. Something I'm camping with has come from a subscription box, and it has been useful. Yeah, and I'm oh, yeah. not even joking. Yeah, he's not joking. You use it all the freaking time. He jokes you not. Great stuff. So go try them out, guys. Um, so we've talked about security, but the other side of security is laws and, and government. Kobe's right? good with this. So I gave this to you because I was did like, you? Kobe's good at law. I don't say that because now I'm going to feel a little self-conscious about don't this be. section. He's... So you have to have some sort of government, government of government. Oh, right there, you already blew it. I don't want government. To keep the peace and control. So um, why do we even have government? Like, what's the point of it? And I think the preamble of the Constitution kind of says it pretty straightforward. Uh, is to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. So those things you have that to get done. That could have been written better. Yeah, and, and a government 
when you're rebuilding this civilization, you, you're going to have to have some sort of government because without it, it's anarchy. And we'll talk about that, but that's not really your yeah, best anarchy route. Is no bueno. It is no bueno. So first off, you're going to have to decide um, what uh, what does this government look like? What are we going? What type of government are we going to run? Um, so I'm let's picturing kinda, like a White House. Are you? Somebody's in. Okay. Then a bunch of seats over in this like big building. Other building. They all okay. sit around, got a little name tag. Well, that's the thing. You could go for the traditional, you know, like we have the what Repu- we know. representative dem- well, democracy. Well, do we know? <laughs> <laughs> Democratic Republic. That's what we have, you know, um, and you could go with that. But there's a lot of other things you could do. So one of the, one of the most popular for quite a while was a monarchy. Right. Yeah. So that's basically like King Cameron of the Atomic Wasteland, and then his sons um, become king after him. So right. So it's a basically family ruled. Yeah. And and it just stays in the family, and they keep running running everything. Right. So the pros about that is there's always less corruption. Yeah. Because it's just like you have a, a you know a iron fist that these people say what's going to happen, and that's what and happens. A lot of the times. Um a lot of the times that is a, a very similar plan that doesn't change a lot. Exactly, yeah. Um, it's going to take less time to solve problems because you yeah. don't have to go through bureaucracy. It's just like Cam says, or never right, happen. don't do this, and then it's done. Yeah, exactly. Instead of saying, okay, we've got to so have a is. vote it's of fast. about 60%, and your representatives <laughs> have to show, you know what I mean? So the bureaucracy can, can really slow things down. With a monarchy, you don't have to worry about it. Um, and if you have a good ruler, if the king and the queen are both really good people, you can prosper, man. Yeah. You can really get rolling, you know? So that's something to think about, a monarchy. Um, usually in history, it seems like those groups that just start with that, yeah. like that first whatever mm-hmm. amount of years, too, with that very first setup, they do well. it works perfect. Yeah. And then it just goes down. It doesn't usually last long. Um, so what about a pure democracy? This is what people are trying to advocate for now. Um, this, this pure democracy, some people actually misconstrue what, uh, America is with the United States. We're not a pure democracy. Okay. This, we aren't straight, uh, 51% rules because that's basically mob rule. So 51% can basically tell everybody what to do at all times. Right. And so that's not a good thing. Um, what we have is a representative democracy it's kind or, of a fail safe or, or yeah or a democratic like, republic so that's basically is we elect people that represent us and they go to washington and they they help make all the laws but there's obviously there's three branches of government they all have checks and balances um, so we aren't a pure democracy when somebody says democracy saying we're not a democracy yeah. we're a representative so is rome a pure democracy or did they actually? No, they, they were a representative. They, had, they were a representative, huh? I believe. Well, the Republic, I guess it had the same problem Republic. the United States has. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm just talking about all these different types that you can no, be thinking good, about, yeah. right? So then there's the oligarchy. So that's basically where you Which have. Which is a, funny because you don't know what these, like yeah. the definition of them, but mm-hmm. it, sometimes it just ends up that way. Exactly. Like, oh, I'm this kind This of is what we are. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's like the oligarchy. So that's basically where a small group of people have control over the, the country, the organization, or the institution, whatever it is. You know what I mean? So the pros with that is obviously, you know, issues get dealt with quickly again because it's just this small group and they make all the calls, right? Um, the leaders are usually w- well respected, and that means that revolutions are relatively rare in this type of uh, government. So, but again, it's just a small group of people that are telling everybody what to do when it comes down to it, right? Uh, dictatorship. We we all know kind of what this is. One dude basically rules everything. Yeah. His what what he says goes or she says goes. Um, the pros about that obviously it's very stable because you know it's just he's gonna there's you know you know who he is you know what how he thinks and what he does and how he governs. There's usually very low crime because the dictatorships really don't take crap from anybody yeah. usually, and they're super efficient because it's one guy making the call, right? The, obviously, the, the downfall is, is they usually go corrupt. I mean, once you get that much power, they usually go corrupt, and it's bad. Um, communism, we, we've heard about this a lot. The government basically owns everything. It provides everything, but in the process, usually kills millions of people. So, um, you know, yeah, everyone is usually always employed and always educated in, in communism, which can be very um, people like that, you know. But usually it comes to killing millions of people. So <laughs> right. that's bad. So you want to not probably go with communism if I were you. Uh, anarchy. Yeah, the idea makes sense. It does, yeah. But then it just, it just, it doesn't. Yeah, work. it, it, it always goes corrupt again. Beings. Yeah. And then anarchy basically. 
That means there is no government base. Well, there's several types of anarchy. Yeah, I thought, but, but the I, traditional anarchy is there's no government. Everybody do whatever they want, right? Sons of anarchy. <laughs> yeah, bikers. Yeah, crazy. And so you know, when you're establishing this in your new civilization or your new society as you're rebuilding, you might want to take pieces of each of them and yeah. say, "Hey, I like this. I like that." Go take them and look up a country that uses them and see how they see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so along with this government, you have to have laws and you have to have forms of punishment. And this becomes key very early on too, to keep the peace and, and make sure that, um, commerce can get running. Cause if you don't have punishment for thieves or anything like that, then people just start stealing and there is no commerce. Yeah. Right. It's just not going to happen. So, um, a lot of people say, you know, use the 10 commandments. That's a really good start with your laws. Um, you know, killing, no stealing, no fraud or lying, yeah. right? You would think it's, most had been born, learned that. Exactly. But. So it's very basic. Um, so your police force have got to have some legal power. They have to be respected because if they're not respected, then they have no power, right? Like when it comes down to it, they have to, they have to have power and they have to be respected. Punishments have got to fit the crime. They've got what's going on now. I know exactly. I didn't want to say that, but (laughs) um, the crime, the punishment has to fit the crime. It has to be stiff enough to dissuade people from doing it, but it can't be so much that people are like, holy crap, this is too much. They're like, you know, you can't kill people for traffic violations. That's bad. Because people are going to be like, wait a minute, I'll skew. I'm I'm leaving. I'm going to not use it. Oh, yeah. not live I'm just going to get out of this. Computer. So that's kind of basically what would happen there. So you got to get that. <laughs> we'll get you food. You can yeah. stay here. This is really nice. Don't look at me or you die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what it comes down up to. Just, oh, what? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, how are you going to enforce these? Is there going to be judges? Are there going to be juries? How is your, what is your court system yeah. going to look like? And right? that whole thing comes into a whole nother. It really does. Because a lot of people, I'm like the three judge system. Mm-hmm. What is that called? What? We know they use the three judges to determine oh. a no jury. Yeah, there's a, there, I don't know. There's a but bunch there's of so weird, many different. There's a ton of different and ways. There's you obviously can do it. huge problems with the jury, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. Anyways, good luck figuring that out. Yeah, figure it out. Good luck. Yeah. So that's all I got on that that side of it the laws and the yeah. government. Don't have a politician in your group. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good idea. <laughs> that could be really, uh, that could cause some problems. Could be good, but doubt it. Um, so. Then next you come to like your trade, your marketing, your scavenging. Obviously, mm-hmm. you can't go and collect all of your goods from scavenging. You've got to – there's going to be other groups. There's going to be yeah. other populations. And if, you know, you get a little uh, – um, what, what would be the oh, – never mind. <laughs> I always think of like this word and it doesn't come out. And then uh, I'm like, do I even ask about it or do okay. I just keep going? Yeah. Um, like what do you, the person that communicates between the two groups, you got the one – Liaison type thing? Kind of, yeah. Okay. But anyway. I don't know. I was looking for a different word. Anyway, okay. but you need to communicate with those groups. Sure. One, um, they may be in a whole completely different like location that can grow different things and yeah. collect fish better and yeah. things like that. So you set up like a trade between your two so that you can grow. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, if you got good relationships, you can defend each other. Mm-hmm. That's probably going to happen. You know, yeah. people aren't going to want to be part of your group because they like their uh, communism. Yeah, and then you got, mm-hmm. but you need to set up a good relationship, a good way of um, communicating with them, and then like a safe point of trading because you don't want to like, aren't y'all come into our place? Because that obviously seems we like, like to trade in our weapons them. room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's where we trade. <laughs> yeah. You'll you'll be all right. <laughs> don't worry about it. So set up an, a set up a good place to to communicate and trade. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to get your groups a lot further. It's going to give you a variety of. Um, using skills from other people and, mm-hmm. and other, um, you know, quality goods that they can give you. And then also, um, you can scavenge and collect things and trade those things. Bartering comes into this. Um, but you got to think about how as a group, you're going to protect yourselves and at the same time, reach out mm-hmm. to scavenge safely and to trade safely and to continue to grow and develop. So, yeah. um, it's, I mean, simple as that. Simple. You it's just got to kind of talk <laughs> about how to like develop a safe way to do it. Yeah. And you got to consider it, it's going to have to happen. If you don't like bartering with people, then find that person that's really good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and doesn't piss people off so that they'll yeah. come and kill y'all. Mm-hmm. So um, next is you got to have the, like a healthcare system. So first thing I'm doing, setting up an insurance plan. <laughs> um, you're going to give me, you know, a certain amount of 20 month. chickens a month. And then I'm going to maybe pay you back when you're sick. 
yeah. maybe. Uh-huh. And then, um, but I'm only going to give you like 30, 70% or something like that. Yeah, makes and sense. Yeah, so it really makes sense. Um, I'm not trying to get gain. I'm trying to help you stay healthy and pay for things you just might not be able to pay exactly. for. Exactly. No, um, that would be gone. Um, so you got to set up a system where you're taking care of the general health of your, of your group. Mm-hmm. People together um, develop weird diseases together. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. And um, yeah. you're going to get people that do have ongoing medical issues. So you've mm-hmm. got to organize a way to to keep track of them and help them so that you can organize the efforts of the scavenging group. You know, yeah. what do we need? We need bandages. We need sterile water, um, condoms, insulin. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. So you've got to help. You've got to set up this healthcare system that is organized, obviously. And then the other thing is you got to deal with sick people. You got to get them away from the general group yeah. and you know you get you want the people that have been keeping records of how to treat these illnesses that mm-hmm. may have wiped out the population and and now you've got to deal with it and figure out how to keep the rest and yourself healthy so you've got to isolate the healthcare system from your group and and just make it organized um like a hospital it's exactly what you want <laughs> yeah so you do have to set up that you know you can't just nonchalantly be like well i've got some splints in this room yeah you've got band-aids so this should all work out fine. Mm-hmm. You do want to isolate the sick from the, you know, it just makes sense. Totally um, does. And then also uh, it allows for those people not only that do have the background, you know, nurses and... Um, PAs. PAs. <laughs> you want to lead the group with PAs. Yeah. But have your physicians and, and ones that can do the surgeries and deliver and, you know, all the yep. complex medical issues. But you have people that are interested in medicine, it's the perfect time to involve them mm-hmm. and have them be learning to Because help. you're going to have to pass that knowledge on. That's going to be yeah. one of the biggest things. Like, how do you pass all the knowledge on that people right. currently There's have? There's those skills that once that person's gone, you don't want to lose it all. So you basically, so, so for me, if I was doing it, I would, for every, you know, important skill or trade that you had, you would have to set up an apprenticeship program you for every to. single one of them. Yeah, you would go right? nowhere if you do that. Yeah. You lose your skills. Every you would lose them. So of- so basically, you got a guy who can build, a couple guys, you got to get a couple youngsters, you got to be with them all the time learning yeah. it, right? And then if you got a guy who knows medical, you got to have a couple of youngsters in there trying to figure that out too. Every one of these, you just have to learn. Yeah. You know? It's so crazy. when the child's born, you just mark worker. Yeah, exactly. Baker, you run a lottery, and they get picked their <laughs> names, and and, and they have no choice. You don't no give it to them exactly. <laughs> but yeah, um, the healthcare is—you just need an organized system yeah. that's isolating people, also quarantining people that come in. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want somebody to come into my group if there was some weird viral disease. You know, yeah, they you got want Ebola. Them to stay, yeah, you want them to stay away, and you don't have the ability to do labs and all that stuff. Yeah. So you basically watch them. You know, it's like <laughs> I'll give you a comfort cot. Mm-hmm. In the, but you're you're not going to be interacting with the rest of the group so for like a couple of weeks or something yeah, like that yeah. yeah so you got to have this system set up uh, it's just a no brainer mm-hmm. um, so yeah the healthcare system is very important in a group and it's got to be an organized system that you think about beforehand yeah I like it I like it a lot I like to have fun too yeah I do so entertainment's going to be a big piece of it because uh, without entertainment people are going to go nutty nuts yeah they're going to go freaking crazy. Yeah. Right, you can't just you can't have them working all the time. So you have to at least have you know, an entertainment committee or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You got to have some people that are actually thinking about it and organizing things to, so that there's you know downtime. People aren't just sitting there looking at a tree. You know, they have to have <laughs> something that's entertaining. Hey, dummy. Hey, dummy. That oak ain't going nowhere. Come on over there's here. No change. I've watched <laughs> it for ten years now. Yeah. Um, so you need to keep that morale up. Um, it's going to be just super duper critical. So I, I think still encouraging musicians and actors and things like that to develop their skills because, you know, you can put on concerts, yeah. you can put on plays or things like that in doing those types of things where the whole community can come together again, you know, it boosts morale. It makes everybody feel part of a community. It makes everybody, you know, like each other yeah. more usually you and know and that's how entertainment's been done forever so exactly people entertaining yeah. dancing parties movies if you got power set up a call sort. of them it, exactly <laughs> fighting the tigers it. and stuff <laughs> you know um and then you know it comes down to the basics you know board games and things like that books yeah huge uh, you know those things are big so if there's writers still keep writing books well your books are gonna you know you can reenact those as exactly a group yeah so. so just 
have it as something that you at least think about. Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do Fifty Shades of Grey tonight in the Coliseum. <laughs> Come watch. When the sun is a... Yeah. We don't know time. Yeah. Um, I just, I'd go and have people scavenge like a huge billboard. Uh huh. Put it in the middle of the, of yeah. the, of the group. Uh -huh. Just be blank and they can post their pictures and they can say, like, <laughs> today I went for board. a walk, <laughs> had fun. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a, it's like a big Facebook, Facebook Instagram board. Exactly. <laughs> oh, jeez. So, um, w another huge, huge. I, I worry about entertainment with you? like the up, like the, yeah. The youngsters. I do, too. They're going to be miserable. They will. <laughs> They'll be looking at a, a dead phone. I, I've just even noticed, like, you know, my kids, I feel like I have to entertain them all the time. Me, too. And I remember growing up, because that's not how it was. My parents didn't entertain me ever. My di mine didn't either. Like, they don't even want to talk to you. It's I don't like, even know You go parents. do what you want to do. Yeah. I'm in here doing this. Oh, you want to have fun? Why don't you go out there and milk the cow? Exactly, yeah. There's weeds that need to be weeded. Work, yeah. You don't say bored in my No, you absolutely And my don't. kids drive me nuts when they will mention bored. I'm like, are you kidding me? You got everything in the damn world. I don't have any time in the day to do everything. Or even like on a, on a, a road trip. It's like, I'm so sick of these games on my iPad. <laughs> I'm like, do you understand? Yeah. I downloaded what you 160. Have? No, it's like when we, I, I was sitting in the back of the truck for one thing in the yeah. open air in the bed of the truck, you yeah, know, me too. under a blanket with like hay and shit flying in my <laughs> eyes constantly, yep. you know, and looking at the road. That's yeah. all I had. Yep. And these guys are playing like this war of mine on a I know. iPad. And they're bored. And I'm like, I can't wait to get home so I can play with computer yeah. sometimes, you know, or something like that. Kids these days. I know. I but you. yeah, most of the time it was, the next car's mine. Now look at that one. <laughs> I know. Semi. Slug oh, bug. you got yeah. a semi. It's, oh, it's ridiculous. We, uh, for entertainment with my brother, we we did, we were in the carpet kit, no seat belts, mm -hmm. nothing like that. Oh, yeah. But we had uh, just a regular TV, you know, the one you turn oh, on. Oh, did like, you? <laughs> I think yeah. I might even said this story on here. I don't think so. But we so. had a generator. On a hitch in the back. Oh my and gosh, I didn't know that. Up into it. That sounds like you. <laughs> and like we were going through Oregon and somebody like pulled up next to my dad and they're like, Your kids are hanging out the back. Because I was pole starting it. Oh, like down the freeway. Like, burn, burn. That is awesome. We had the N64 and a regular TV. Well, that sounds glorious right the, there. Uh, generator, yeah. yeah, I never had that. We were like in the open air in the back of the well, truck. Well, that was most of my life. Under that a blanket for like was, four hour drives. Yeah, no, that was most of my life. In the winter. <laughs> <laughs> with no clothes in on. Russia. Yeah. I don't Siberia. know why I was there. Um, so sanitation <laughs> is a huge... Sitting amongst dead deer and <laughs> yeah. half-skinned elk. Yeah. Oh, I hate this. Although they, you could kind of crawl in them and get warm if you yeah. had to. That was a nice <laughs> thing about it. It's like Parks and Rec when he's telling the kids... <laughs> We'll just make we'll make wooden wheels, and you guys can push them around like oh, Ron's talking yeah. about, like uh -huh. all this old generic stuff. Uh, That's what you're gonna have to go back to. Exactly, you're gonna have to go back to making musical <laughs> instruments out of wood and yeah. So san sanitation, Cameron. This no, I'm is gonna going. Be I gotta talk more about. This. Okay, <laughs> it's gonna be a huge aspect. No. Once you start getting people together in one place, sanitation becomes um, basically. Uh, it's critical. It's like life saving. If yeah. you don't have good sanitation, you're gonna die yeah. at some point. <laughs> so think about that. For one, have you driven past a human poop plant? I have. It's the worst smell on earth. Yeah. And if, just think of that, just all the time brewing up inside exactly. your community. So what is sanitation when it comes down to it? It's basically how do we wipe in your butthole? How do we get rid of waste? And you know, and how do we keep ourselves and our living areas clean and free of nasty, nasty, gross stuff? Um, because look, once SHTF happens, there's no more garbage, man. So you're going to have to figure out, okay, how do garbage. we get, yeah, garbage. how do we get rid of the garbage? You know, what are we going to do? You have to establish some sort of a system for removing that. So you might have to have a garbage removal committee, Yeah. you know, or what do they call them these days? Uh, sanitation experts or something. I don't know what they call them. They're not garbage men. Adopt anymore. a group. Ado <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Americans each produce about 2,072 pounds of trash a year. Huh. That's mooey trash That's right there. A That's a lot of trash. So you're going to have to have a way to dispose of this. How is Earth not I so big that it's colliding with everything else? I, well, because I, I guess we're using the stuff from Earth to make it. Yeah. So we're not like producing new stuff. We're just making it into something else, right? 
Think about that right there. Yeah, I've gone to the dump, and yeah. a lot of that I don't think is biodegradable. <laughs> I'm almost positive it's <laughs> Driving not. over TVs <laughs> yeah. and bikes and refrigerators. Oh yeah, you're like, is that going to break down over the next 4 billion years? So improper garbage disposal, basically it'll cause soil contamination, air contamination. Your animal life is going to be affected. So there's a bunch of parts of Africa, again, here we go back to Africa, where waste management is basically non-existent. So it, it's already causing devastating epidemics. Um, and like that's where you start getting malaria from like mosquito-borne yeah. malaria. Um, Lassa fever apparently is a thing. Yellow fever and other grave diseases. All of this come from... Hepatitis. Yeah, from bad sanitation. Um, in LA, in those homeless shanty towns, have you seen those? Those are freaking insane. Yeah. They're starting now to see outbreaks of typhus through those <laughs> because of the bad sanitation. It's like back in the 1700s. Know. You know, like it's ridiculous. throwing your turds out in the yeah. uh, right in the road. It'll be road. fine. It's just poop. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's, it's natural. It's not going to hurt the wagon mm-hmm. wheels. So um, you have to have a <laughs> procedure natural. for garbage. So there's several ways you can do it. You can burn it. Um, obviously not the best for the environment. But people have done it forever. Um, That'll just, pinpoint your group. It quick. will. So that's one thing. There's but it, smoke coming up. But also, there. depending on what you're burning, it can be super toxic. So you have to be careful about what you do there. Um, burying it. That's I've usually, burned tires for years, and I'm fine. <laughs> I got no problems. Um, so uh, burning it, or I mean, burying it, is another way to do it, and that's how we usually do it now, right? Uh, just don't do it near a water source. That's a bad <laughs> idea. Okay. Just throw it in the river. Yeah, just throw it in the Earth river. Earth will take it away. <laughs> Mother Earth will take care of it. Or you can recycle as much as possible. You're probably going to want to anyways yeah. in this situation. So repurpose as much of that trash as you possibly can. Um, along with sanitation it comes clean water. That's going to be paramount for everything. So to yeah. make sure when you're rebuilding a civilization, you're near clean water sources. It's going to be much easier to... Prevent to, illnesses and exactly. keep things clean. And- you got to have a clean water source. You don't want to have to constantly be trying to go gather clean water and clean dirty or water. Or burn up your filters. To, exactly, uh, yeah. It's not a good idea. Stuff. And also establish a water storage procedure, you yeah. know, so you can keep, you know, fresh clean water on site all the time. And then food storage and prep is also going to be big with within that. Um, but I just said, I'm going to make my new civilization right by the Charmin plant. And I'm going to be <laughs> like the new CEO of Charmin. <laughs> so that's well, what I would do. Spoiler alert, I'm going to be the CEO of Angelsoft. Oh, this is the SHTF Wars. <laughs> sounds like a... We're just catapulting toilet paper back TV and TV reality show right there. That sounds like a really good one. So that's that's basically all we have for yeah. the basics of rebuilding a civilization. We know there's a lot more that goes into that, but yeah. these are the things you really do need to consider beforehand. Mm-hmm. It's like, if we are in this long-term thing, what am I going to do? Yeah, exactly. Am I going to start a group or am I going to sit down and die? Yep, Exactly. So, hey, guess, what? Oh, you going on? No, I'd say, do you want to talk about survival boxes real quick? That's exactly where I was going. Okay. You read my mind. I totally did, didn't or I? Or my notes. <laughs> survival boxes, the only subscription box packed with all the essential survival supplies that you need to prep for surviving disasters, emergencies, your next outdoor adventure, or re- redeveloping society. Mm-hmm. There are many different boxes to choose from, so you can order the survival food, water, and gear required for your survival plan. Sign up today to get survival box delivered to your doorstep every month. Mm-hmm. No contracts. Nope. Cancel whenever. Whenever you want. Use promo code Casual Peppers for ten percent off your first box on any subscription or store order at Survival Boxes. These boxes are not expensive, Mm-mm. and they are. Packed to the freaking brim. Good stuff. Like, seriously. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, use the freaking 10% off code. Do it. We want to keep them. Yeah. We love them. So, oh, I love them. <laughs> um, <laughs> while Cam cries, let's talk about tack pack. We got a tack pack to look at real quick. Shall we? Yeah. And you can get 10% off these too. Yeah. Gosh, 10% off everything. These guys, this small little box. I know. Like, you were. You're losing money by not subscribing. <laughs> You're actually losing money. If Seriously, you don't it's like I, I still don't know how they do this. I don't either. So this month, there's usually one item that's worth the entire box. Yeah, always. And let's start with the Sog Ace Fixed Blade Knife, a twenty-seven dollar value right there. It's over half. Look at that freaking. Look thing. at it. It's beautiful. That's Cam a throat call, slitter, heart can, stabber. No, the heart stabber. The rib splitter is what we call it <laughs> right there. Because immediately you want to go into yeah. offensive mode. Fantastic knife. And then there's the Eagle Eye Switch View, $20 value. So basically you're at 47 bucks right there. It's like a little add-on to any optic that makes adjustment really, really quick. Kind of oh, cool nice. little deal. Uh-huh. Like a, yeah. 
Because your scopes and stuff could get cracked. Uh huh. Boom, slap that on there. So, and then there's the nine line t shirt, $22 value. So now you're already at $69. What was it? A t shirt? The t shirt. Yeah. Cute little t shirt. Right? It's adorable. That's and then, sparkly, kind of. Then there's the Cutter Machine Works Warthog, $22 value. Butter Cutter spring. Machine. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, That's what I'm going to name my knife. Well, you watch cutter. out, this is the cutter machine. It's got a buffer spring. It's quieter. It reduces twang, and I, I got so much twang, I got to reduce it. And it shoots super flat. Yeah. So that's uh, another. Dude, reduces muzzle rise. That's mm-hmm. the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. So check out Tac Pack, guys. Um, they do amazing work, and you guys. They really do amazing. Check work. it out. It's time for the quick and dirty medical tip. All right, so uh, it's really hot out there, <laughs> and I feel like I've suffered heat <laughs> stroke a couple of times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I just wanted to, I think I've talked a little bit about it, but there's some kind of more detailed ways. This would be basically for, you know, somebody that you're around. <laughs> um, there's part of this that's kind of funny. You, you're going to really get to know that person really well. Are you? Okay. Yeah. So um, number one thing, get a good thermometer. Okay. And the, the thing I wanted to mention about thermometers is you do want one that can go in an orifice. <laughs> oh, you do? Like... The, you don't want the head. Those are really nice, but they're going to limit you big time. Okay. I think having both is what you want okay. because yeah. that one is quick and easy and kids don't want to punch you and scream at you. Yeah. The, the head scan in the temple mm-hmm. or even the ones you don't even have to touch the person. They're great, but they're going to limit you big time in a mm-hmm. SHTF because you need one that you can probe a hole, mm. either their ear or their mouth, armpit, or their b-hole. Mm. So in this case, yeah. you're going to definitely want one that you can stick in their b-hole. Oh, gosh. Because that's the only way to consistently get an accurate body temperature. Wow. Like, no doubt. There's, okay. There's no way better. No way better. Than driving it in the b-hole. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so this is about uh, basically heat stroke, heat exhaustion. So critical observations to, to manage this. So... There's been a bunch of deaths from it recently, yeah. like the big, huge heat wave that came through. Um, anyway, ways to recognize. Or so first, I want to talk about the observations in management mm-hmm. of the heat stroke. So we've I, I kind of had mentioned before, like ways to recognize it. And there's some there's some few things I wanted to mention about misconceptions mm. about recognizing and um, evaluating somebody that has heat stroke. So the misconceptions are the person stops sweating. They're not going to develop heat stroke until like if they're if they're sweating, they're not going to have heat stroke because they still uh, have enough. That's absolutely inaccurate. Not true. Okay. So you, they're they're usually sweating profusely when they're going through that mm-hmm. um, heat uh, exhaustion. Um, at, they uh, are severely dehydrated. That's not always the case. They usually do develop dehydration, but like I said, the sweating. And they may have just been drinking a lot and got out, and still they can have that heat stroke. Yeah, body temperature can be accurately determined using external means. So there's only one way to determine if somebody is suffering from um, heat exhaustion, heat stroke that's critically ill. You got to stick it in their bee hole. Mm-hmm. If you look in there, if you put you're it in talking their about ear, thermometer, then, right? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> you just said you got to stick it in their bee hole. <laughs> you put your finger in their bee hole, and if it's hot, it feels warm. This guy's having a, I believe this okay. guy has heat stroke. I'm going to have to test you. Bend over. Man. <laughs> smells weird and it's hot. No. Sticking a thermometer in their b-hole. We that's need the to be only way. Very direct and very obvious with yeah. this. Okay. He sent me to stick it in the b-hole. <laughs> I can determine. <laughs> yes. Use a thermometer. That's the only way. There's no other way. Honey, you might you have heat stroke. You can't scan anywhere else on their body <laughs> because. <laughs> Call me. No. Um, mental status, a patient with severe heat illness means everything's okay. Wait, lucid mental status doesn't uh, mean, you know, they're not out of it and everything. Yeah. Um, that's not accurate that they're, they're developing it and they will end up that way. Mm-hmm. So you can't just determine off their, uh, mental status shivering. If mm-hmm. they're shivering, you know, they're obviously, um, cooled down enough that their body temperature, that doesn't mean that they're ready or basically that they're mm-hmm. being treated correctly and I'll, I'll talk about the shivering why they they say you know if they're shivering they're good um it is a way to kind of see that your treatment is successful with cooling the body but like if they're shivering you can't assume that oh they're, they're cold and they're not having they're fine because yeah. their body temperatures are already too high um and then uh cold water immersion is the only way to treat it and i'll talk about that but 
don't don't worry about it's you know puts them at risk for drowning because they can have a seizure if they pass out you know you got to observe them yeah and they may be throwing up and pooping and so if they're like in a tub of water <laughs> yeah like don't worry about that sanitary yeah. mess you've got to get their body temperature down so some people are like you know don't put them in the water it's dangerous no you got to do that um and then the hypothermic after drop like getting them too cold too fast they can get hypothermia mm. um you, that's why you got to be very careful with the way you measure. You got to do rectal, rectal, rectal temperatures Reticle. with. <laughs> you got to stick it in there. Right, <laughs> rectal. Um, but yeah, they could develop hypothermia. But again, don't worry about that. You've got to get their body temperature mm -hmm. down. And then um, ice water immersion is uncomfortable for the patient. Yeah, I would suspect so. So you uh, don't do it because you think it's going to be uncomfortable for them. You've got to get them cold. Death is uncomfortable, <laughs> okay? So, yeah, people that suffer from heat stroke, usually there's confusion and, you know, headaches. They may pass out. Mm -hmm. um, they may be sweating profusely, and obviously the environment. They're out in the sun for uh, – they don't have to be out all day or anything like that. If they start showing those signs of just feeling sick, like flu-like, mm -hmm. and they've been out in the sun, you have to assume they may be getting heat exhaustion or heat stroke. The first thing you do, um, stick a thermometer in their butthole. Okay. If they're really pretty dang sick, yeah. you know, otherwise, if you have means of cooling them down, giving them fluids and electrolyte based or just water, and then like cool, uh, rags on their necks mm -hmm. and on their head. And if they progress wor and they worsen, get the thermometer in their butt mm -hmm. and then you need to submerge them in ice water. Oh, cool. For like, Literally. um, <laughs> yeah so you need to keep this is what's tricky i guess you just lift them up and keep putting the thermometer in their butt okay but you want to bring their temperature because usually their body core temperature is like 104 to 105 oh uh, when they have with heat, heat exhaustion. stroke or heat exhaustion so you keep monitoring it keep them in ice water if you don't have a way to check with a thermometer you put them in for about 20 minutes mm. and get their wow. body temperature down and then you need to do this is where it's hard if you're in a survival situation. Yeah. You can't run labs, but you need to get them more medical attention. Yeah. And I can't go into that. It's okay. just too hard. Yeah. So number one things, recognize, um, get their body temperature down first. You know, Get them lots of fluids if they're coherent and mm -hmm. get cool rags and everything on them. Bring that body temperature down. If they are confused and acting worse and, they, and you need to get that rectal temperature, yeah. it's usually high. You need to submerge the whole body, you know, all the way up. Dang. Yeah. That's something there. So it's kind of an intense treatment, but yeah. um, it's it's the same step for heat stroke, heat exhaustion, anything like that is get mm -hmm. that core body temperature down. And you would think it would be a little intense to just submerge them in cold, like it would be too shocking yeah. to the body. But no, that's the only way to treat it. And then you get them to more medical attention. Hmm. And they may recover, you know, after that, start yeah. feeling better and in a survival situation, that's that's, that's all, you can, all you can do. do anyways. Keep yeah. giving them oral fluids and keep putting stuff in their butt. I like it. <laughs> Sounds like fun. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. That's Watch all we got today. Out there. We got, that's all we got today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to us uh, here on whatever plot, pod podcast platform <laughs> you're using. Um, go to YouTube. Plot bean. <laughs> um, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Follow us on all those places. And thank you so much. Anything else, Cameron? Nope. Just get your sex ratio all, all right. balanced out. Do it.